So you have prepared your PowerPoint deck, you have rehearsed your presentation, but are you ready for their questions? In this video, we will talk about 10 most common thesis defense questions and how to answer them with clarity and confidence. If you are preparing for a thesis defense, this might be the most important 10 minutes you spend. Let's get into it. Question number one, why did you choose this topic? This is a very common question. Maybe you don't get it exactly how it is worded here. Maybe they will phrase it a little bit differently. They might ask, what led you to this research topic? Or why did you focus your investigation on this issue? But they're essentially asking about the same thing. They want to know, are you genuinely invested? Or was this just convenient? So one of the best ways, in my view, to answer this question is to mention three things. The academic rationale for choosing this topic, a personal connection to the topic, and its broader relevance or implications. You could say something like, I chose this topic because I noticed this or that particular issue in my work experience, and I wanted to explore it using this or that theoretical framework and empirical data. This way, through my research, I could contribute some practical insights that are grounded in theory, but useful in real world situations something like that. We offer a personal connection to the topic, we mention its academic and theoretical relevance, and we touch on its practical implication. This is much better than simply saying, oh, I just found it interesting. Question number two, how did you arrive at your research question or hypotheses? This may sound basic, but it is crucial. They want to see if you understand your own investigative focus or not. And if you answer this question poorly, this could easily invite a series of critical challenging follow-up questions. So this is what I would recommend. Don't read your research question word for word as if you don't even understand it. Instead, explain it in your own words. Make it yours. At its core, I wanted to see how A influences B in the context of XYZ. And I formulated my research question this way because previous research hadn't examined this yet or previous research showed mixed results, or previous research highlighted this as an important future research direction, etc. Whatever best fits your narrative. The point here is, don't read your own research question word for word. That doesn't add any value. It's right there in the thesis. Everybody can read it. You want to show that you own it, that it is yours. Question number three, why did you choose this research methodology? Again, they are testing you. Did you just follow a template or did you actually consider and choose your research method deliberately? So for this question, this is what I would recommend. Link the choice of your research method to your research question. And you get bonus points if you show that you considered alternative research methodological approaches and eventually chose this one. Say something like, I chose semi-structured interviews, a qualitative research methodological approach, because my research objective was to explore participants' experiences and perspectives in depth. This method allowed flexibility while still providing structure for comparison. I had considered using an online, fully structured interviewing approach to get a larger sample size, but that wouldn't have captured the same richness or nuance in the responses. Perfect. We argued why our research was qualitative, we showed that we considered different methods, and we explained why the method that we ultimately used was optimal for this research. Question number four. What are your main findings? What are the most important results? This is a check on your data analysis and results, making sure that you analyzed your data correctly, formulated results logically, and that you can summarize on the spot. Here is what I would recommend. Share two to three key findings in plain, simple language and in a structured manner. You could say something like, the first key finding was that this or that theme emerged consistently, especially in the context of something. And secondly, this or that concept was found to do something significant based on this or that consideration. Finally, and somewhat unexpectedly, this or that interesting insight came up which, while unexpected, has important implications for practitioners, policy, or future research. See? Firstly, secondly, and finally. You've answered this question perfectly. Question number five. How do your findings relate to existing research? Or how do your results relate to literature and prior research? 
This is checking on your discussion, your theoretical implications. They want to know whether you can engage in a scholarly conversation by putting your own work in the broader context of research and literature on the topic. So here, the most important thing you need to do is to use citations and references. Mention sources, key authors, names, important work on the topic. Say something along the lines of, my findings on this or that strongly align with Smith and Johnson 2023, who showed similar patterns regarding XYZ, although Juan et al. 2024 reported conflicting results, but that was in a different context, which might explain why they found this or that. You need to have some key authors and key works in mind. Being able to refer to them by name adds credibility to your answers, not only for theoretical discussion type questions, but also for questions on your introduction and your lit review. Question number six, what are the limitations of your study? This is a common question, and most of the time, it is a perfectly fair question. It's not a trick question, because every research study has limitations, even the ones published in top-tier journals. So don't say, I don't think there were any limitations. In your thesis, most likely, you already have presented a few limitations. So here, in response to this question, simply pick a couple of most relevant potential limitations and share them with the panel. And if you could, also mention why these limitations are understandable and acceptable in the context of your thesis research. Say something like, my sample size was relatively small, which limits generalizability. But given that my research was qualitative exploratory, generalizability was not a major expectation. The goal of my study was to go deep, not broad. And the interview data gave me that. Question number seven, what would you do differently if you could start over again? This is a common hypothetical question. It works on every thesis and on every student. So professors love asking this question, especially if they didn't read your thesis super carefully. Then this is a perfect question to ask. And the best and easiest way to answer this question is to relate to your limitations. If one of your limitations was that sample size was rather small, then obviously, if you were able to do this study again, you would enlarge the sample size. If one of the limitations was that the study only used self-report data, then you could say that the next time around, you would include peer ratings or supervisor ratings to further boost validity. For every potential limitation, you have a hypothetical improvement strategy. Easy. Question number eight, how can your findings be applied in practice? What can practitioners in the field use from your results? A question like this would be especially common in applied programs, and chances are your thesis already does include a practical implications section. So here, what you should do is to present a reasonable and realistic recommendation. Say something like, my findings showing this or that suggest that organizations should consider A when designing policies and regulations around B. And the most important thing to keep in mind is XYZ, something like that. Additionally, based on my experiences, a couple of things are relevant here. One thing to bear in mind is that you should not overclaim. No one is solving world hunger with one research thesis, so don't overclaim and exaggerate when it comes to the practical value of your research. And the other thing is, often there will be follow-up questions from the panel on your answer, and most likely they would ask something like, but how exactly? How do you implement it in practice? What specific steps would you take? So be prepared to comment a bit further on the implementability of your practical recommendation. Don't be surprised by a follow-up question here. Question number nine, what surprised you the most? What was the most unexpected throughout your research thesis process? And sometimes along the same line, what did you learn the most from your entire thesis research journey? These questions are about curiosity and reflection. So share a moment of genuine surprise and what it taught you. For example, I expected participants to say X, but they actually observed Y, which made me revisit some of my original assumptions. And this taught me when it comes to conducting qualitative research, you should always be prepared for surprises. Always expect the unexpected. Question number 10, do you have any questions for us? Or, in your opinion, are there important aspects regarding your thesis that you feel we should have asked 
but didn't. Here, to raise questions to the panel is optional, but could be powerful. You could consider questions like, I was curious about how you see this topic evolving in the future, based on your expertise and the research you've conducted in this area. Or, I would love to know how you personally evaluate a strong thesis beyond the formal criteria. Are there specific things you're looking for? Or, are there any elements in my work that you think could be developed further for publication or future research? It would be nice to give them an opportunity to show off their knowledge and expertise. You know, throw them a bone. To wrap up this video, these 10 questions don't cover everything, but they cover a lot. And maybe you don't get these 10 questions in exactly the same way as they are phrased here, but chances are you will be getting some versions of these 10 questions in one form or another. So prep well, stay calm, and remember, it's not about defending perfection, it's about showing your brain works in real time. Feel free to drop your questions, fears, good or bad experiences in the comments down below. Let's help the next batch of students get through this thing. Do check out my other videos on thesis defense. I am sure you will find them helpful and interesting. Good luck preparing for your thesis defense. I wish you a lot of success. And remember to have a little fun, because you have earned it.